Let's talk about your team first. Because the initial team which we had formed was not the team which won the Smart India Hackathon. At your first 20 hours, what kind of a washout? The question which our judges asked was that QR based thing is something which already exists. Uh, where is your team now? Like, what are you guys up to? Did you make use of all this uh, particular, uh, you know, uh, triumph? We started our own startup actually. It's named as Corenters, which is basically a software development company. Winning Smart India Hackathon is an accomplishment that requires careful planning, teamwork, innovation and dedication. SIH is one of the largest hackathons in the world organized by the Government of India to encourage young minds to work on innovative solutions to real world problems. What all you can do to increase your chances of winning? Let's hear it out from the past winners. Today we have with us is Gamaliel to share his experience. Welcome Gamaliel to this show. Hi sir. Hi sir. It's a pleasure to be a part of okay. it. So we are indeed uh, excited to have you here on the show so that you know uh, you can share your experiences in the past editions and you know our uh, future aspirants can make use of all that. So Gamaliel to begin with please let us know about the problem that you worked upon in the edition that you won. Yeah. So uh, we won the Smart India Hackathon 2022 edition which is the one which is the last year. So we selected a problem statement which was given by the DRDO, the Ministry of Defense, which is basically an alternative system for OTP because they mentioned that there is a problem with OTP in low network zones hmm. and they need an alternative system that could replace OTP in the near future. And that was the problem statement which we had selected. Okay, so that problem actually, you know, it's pretty genuine and even we have felt sometimes when we are like in areas which are like a bit interior. So, uh, how did you plan to, you know, go about solving this or, or in fact before that, what kind of a team did you put up and how you all got together? Let's talk about your team first. There, I can divide it into two phases. The team before the finale, the team after the finale. Because okay. the initial team which we had formed was not the team which won the Smart India Hackathon. So, first we had formed a team, to be honest, I formed it with my friends considering that with different various skill sets. Seeing that one is a web developer, one is an app developer. Because we knew that the team formation is most crucial for selecting a problem statement. So we put our best into it and as per the SIH guidelines, you know, at least one girl need to be in the team. And so we selected two girls from our team, that two based on the skill set. So we were able to form a formidable six member team. That is in the initial stage. And going throughout when we talk about the problem statement, I'll tell how we got it selected. And uh, the problem uh, when what we faced was when we got after the results. So after getting the results, I think it was uh, around 20 days before the hackathon, uh, we got about the nodal center details and all. So three members, uh, three boys, they stepped back stating mm -hmm. some reasons that they won't be able to partake. And that was the time which we thought that uh, it was all to quit because we had only three members in our team. But I don't know how we got the next day. So we got a mail from Smart India Hackathon stating that we can replace with uh, three new members. That is the time we hunt for juniors because we had just one day time. So we filtered out a new team again. And with that team, we had to reconstruct the entire project again. And that's how we got into the finale itself. This is all behind the team formation. This is really commendable, you know, working it out at the very last moment, reconstituting a team is not a, not a small time job. So uh, congratulations on that. You were able to do that. So now coming to the team itself, the finally which you were able to form. So how did you manage that particular team, uh, the division of work and strategizing, you know, all that stuff. Can you throw some light on that? So how we planned is I actually split up the entire product because initially we made a lot of plans and strategies of how we are going to deploy the product, the technical stack. We split up everything into milestones. Like in the mm -hmm. first phase, we are going to complete this part of the development. In this phase, we are going to complete this part. One will be working on the market and research. And this is how we split up the team. And uh, going forward in the with the new team also, we continued the same strategy. So I split up words to each of them. And especially when it comes to the 36 hour hackathon, I give time frames because time frame is very crucial in this point. So based on that, uh, we filtered out all the possibilities for completing the product. And the plan worked out well and my team gave the best and that is the reason which we were able to mm. construct the whole product. So, I mean, good team management, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, okay, now tell us about the preparation that you did up around the problem itself, the OTP issue that you were about, you know, about to resolve. So, how did you manage to, you know, deal with that? Any research or any 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 thought or any planning that went went behind that? Yeah. So, first, uh, initially, when selecting the problem statement, uh, we didn't finalize this problem statement initially. So, what I did was I told my team to shortlist three problem statements from the portal because there are a lot of problem statements. So I structured it in a way for a proper team interest. So each of the team members selected three different problem statements. Then we had a group discussion and discussed the top five problem statements from there. From that, we, uh, we researched for each and every of the product. And there, uh, this OTP project seemed something unique and something that is uh, having a social value. And then we started working out on what are all the possibilities that we can do. And we first initially devised a system, which is basically a QR authentication. And we considered that we'll be using an SMS based uh, system for the people who are having button phones. And we focused more on the security. And I believed that uh, uh, when we studied about OTP alternative and uh, stuff that are existing, when an OTP gets delayed from up to five to 10 minutes, a hacker can easily breach into it. And we were able to try it on our own. And to overcome all that, we started using uh, different types of technologies. We built our own custom algorithm for uh, phasing it. And this was what we had planned before the finale, this QR-based alternative. But after getting into the finale, in the even in the first ideation pitch itself, the question which our judges asked was that QR-based thing is something which already exists. We need something that is dominated for an offline mode of authentication and stuff. So our initial idea got completely thrashed there because we then we had to figure out a new idea. In the first 20 hours of the hackathon, we started brainstorming everywhere and alternative and stuff. We couldn't get anything and hopes were dying out there. But all of a sudden, we got a spark of an idea in the 20th hour, I guess. And we didn't rush up that moment as well. So for up to three to four hours after that, we started doing the brainstorming and stuff. And that time, the team management, the planning was very crucial because we just had around 12 to 13 hours for completing the product and the new idea as well. So we laid out the plan, we set up the idea, and we were able to complete it just one hour uh, before the 36-hour hackathon. And that's how our uh, demo went. And getting into what was our solution, it is basically called as USSD. And you hopefully you will be aware, in the olden button phones, we have a system where we can get this balance details and stuff with our code. That is star 99 hash or something mm -hmm. you put, you'll be getting the output and stuff. And we got a spark of an idea of can we do anything with that? And when we analyzed and market research, we saw that in India, only government organizations can get access to USSD. So we had no other option rather than building our own uh, service provider. So we were able to build our own server as a service provider, like an alternative for Geo, and we were able to simulate it. And how our system will work is that when you go to a website, normally you fill all your details and put a verify OTP thing here. Here, you, when you click on verify, you'll be getting a USSD code, something like star 99 hash or something like that. You need to take that code and call from your mobile number. And automatically, uh, if it is valid based on the authentication which is stored in the database and our structure, you will automatically get logged into your website. And this works even in airplane mode. This is our final solution to that problem. Okay, something very interesting, which uh, you know kind of struck me when you said that your first 20 hours were kind of a washout. So, uh, just uh, going back to that phase, uh, was there uh, any lack of planning or was there like uh, no strategy uh, with you guys, you know, when you went into that 36 hour period? So, did you think of, you know, how you're going to structure those 36 hours? So, why did that happen? That 20 hours got really uh, with no result? Uh, what we planned was our system, we had a proper planning of how we are going to complete it with respect to the QR uh, uh, project which we set. So the first round happened at around sixth hour. So we had a proper planning on what we are going to pitch our architecture and stuff. The moment when the judges said that this is not what we are expecting, that's when uh, things uh, strike back. And okay, we had a backup plan. Okay, uh, it's not that whatever we do, it's going to be 100% perfect. And that's what uh, uh, we were unable to hunt for a new idea. That was the problem there because uh, the initial idea was thrashed back and nearly all the five teams which are shortlisted for the finals had the same idea. That was the problem there even. And so that's what the judges told to revamp the entire idea. Mm -hmm. And this 
idea won't uh, be something that is worth it. And hunting for the new idea took the 20 hours. That is the thing here. So it's not that we didn't uh, have a proper plan there. That is the reason we got the idea in the 20th hour. Even though it was too late, we got it. And something that was unique and that could stand as an innovation that could last long. Because we didn't want to give some preconceived idea or something that was not practically possible. So we are a kind of team which uh, had to ensure that we are building something, it must have a social impact, not a short-term goal. Because winning the hackathon was uh, secondary for us. Bringing it as a valuable product uh, for a large scale was our plan. That is the reason it took that much of time. Sir. That was the thing. So as we can understand that those judging rounds are really crucial ones. So any piece of advice that you would want to share, uh, how to deal with those judges round? Because in your case, it made a lot of difference and it, uh, you know, kind of uh, changed the entire course of your uh, work totally, you know, 360 degrees. So how do you uh, want to, uh, you know, share this particular thing? How to deal with this uh, judging rounds or their expectations? Yeah. So the thing is that to be prepared. So in our problem statement, we have just mentioned one line stating that uh, we need an alternative for OTP for low network zones. So we had a preconceived uh, assumption of, okay, this is what we are going to do. It's not that what we plan is something that is going to work 100%. So we must always have a plan B. That is the thing here. Okay, you are working on something, that is fine. If it goes well, that is perfectly fine. But it's... Uh, it's the reality, right? Everything can't be 100% perfect. Mm. The thing is that whatever the situation is, we have to be bold and ready to face it. There's no uh, way to quit back because if we, even we could have thought that, okay, it's over. We can't do anything over, over that. But we didn't because we know that we have come this far. Rather than quitting, we can give a try. That is the thing here. And uh, getting demotivated or getting... Stuff's like, okay, this is the end. That mindset is something mm. that will ruin stuff. And being as a leader, mm. the, it is the duty of the leader to ensure that he mm. motivates the team, no matter whatever the situation. A backup plan means a short-term plan because uh, initially you would have had a time frame of two or three months for doing what are the developments and stuff. And this 36 hours is where you're going to deploy the entire thing. The entire hard work is going to be deployed here. And so... Having a proper backup plan on market research and stuff. Pre-preparation is crucial here, to be honest. As uh, as I said, our team was formed 20 days before. That was a major hurdle. And to be honest, the initial code which we had was also scrapped one week before the finale because it had contributions of the previous team members. So we had to rebuild the entire code. So the entire thing which we had planned for six to five months, we had to... Speed it up. It would have been two or three days time. We have to complete it in one hour. We have to complete it in 30 minutes. The coordination is very crucial here and a proper understanding between the team. Because if we don't have a proper understanding between the team and the leader says to do a certain work, it will come into something called pressure or stress. Mm. And working together is something uh, uh, that can take things to the next level. I am a person who always believe that uh, the strength of the team is the leader. And the strength of the leader is the team. And if you believe that, anything is possible. That's what. So the strong message coming out from your side is, you never say die attitude. I mean, that is, I yeah. think, the forms the backbone of your performance out there in SIH. So now coming to another very important aspect is the final presentation. That is very crucial. You know, the entire yeah. work that you've done till date depends upon that. So how did you deal with yeah. the final presentation part of your program? So uh, for the initial, uh, for the final pitch, we had uh, spent around two hours for analyzing what we are going to pitch because it's just an eight minute time frame for the final pitch. We have to show the product demo. We have to explain the product. We have to explain the architecture. The judges need to understand that. So we had a proper plan of time frame. The first one and a half minutes, we are going to explain our presentation. We are going to explain our architecture. The next two minutes, we are going to give the demo of our product. And the next one minute, the judges will analyze our product. And the next three minutes will be the time frame for them to uh, question us and for us to answer. This is how we split up the eight minutes, actually. And what we did is we arranged uh, four laptops in front of the judges. One laptop was having the PPT, one laptop was having the architecture, one laptop was having the product, one laptop was having the database, the code and everything. And that made it more convenient for the judges to see through on whatever we are seeing. And that was something which worked out, actually. It didn't consume much time for us to navigate between a single laptop and stuff. 
So starting from the arrangements itself, it was a plus for us because uh, the architecture we made, it was a simple architecture. We just used a, a small block diagrams to explain the architecture. The more we keep it simple, the more it will be easy. Moreover, we ensured the code was optimized because the judges went through our code. They asked questions from the code as well. They asked questions from our product and we were ready for facing everything because we had a proper time frame of everything and everything went as per the time frame itself. And that's what having a killer presentation is very crucial because most uh, people focus on the product and miss out on the presentation. Giving equal importance to the presentation just as the product is very crucial in aspect, especially when it comes to the final round uh, of evaluation. So having a killer presentation, that's the operating uh, line here. Yeah. And indeed, it was very meticulous of you, you know, the way you arrange everything. So I'm sure people will notice that and make use of that particular input from you. So Gamaliel, uh, now tell us, Kate, after going through all this, after winning this thing, uh, where is your team now? Like, what are you guys up to? Did you make use of all this uh, particular, uh, you know, uh, triumph of yours and uh, step forward? Or where are you guys now? What are you guys doing now? Uh, actually, we have started our own startup, actually. It's named as CodeHunters, which is basically a software development company. And uh, we started it as a web-based service-based company. I said that the team was formed in the last minute, right? That team, the three brothers of me, we four of us together started a company. And uh, this SIH product and the win of Smart India Hackathon was our stepping stone to elevate to the next level. And adding to it in the results uh, sheet, which came, our name was in the first as well. And uh, that was a plus. So we were able to get claims with the help of WIT as well. And currently we have uh, completed around 60 plus projects from eight different countries. Our office is uh, headquartered in uh, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. So the second office we have planned to open in Bahrain lately. And uh, currently we are operating as a completely service-based company uh, with web development, app development, digital marketing, cyber security, and everything that is uh, related to the software aspect. Because we have planned to keep our startup completely bootstrapped without involving any external investments. That is the thing here. So the product of SIH, we have planned to land it out as a SaaS-based product. And the build is on progress as we need a huge external investments for that starting from the marketing and the server. We need an agreement with the government for the USSD. So there are a lot of procedures to be done that and we need a lot of investment. And this service based aspect of our startup is something that is standing there. I am the chief operating officer of my startup and uh, I'm here representing it as well. Sir. So that's really wonderful to hear. You not only be, you know went ahead, ahead to win the competition, but converted this win into something very substantive. So congratulations on your startup and we wish you all the very best and all the you know, success uh, going forward. So Gamaliel, it was really nice talking to you and I hope uh, the inputs from you will be very welcoming and very useful for the people who wish to you know, participate in SIH in the further coming editions. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, all the best for your future endeavor. Uh, thank you, sir. It was a great pleasure to be here. And I know that there are definitely a lot of people like me who needs guidance and stuff. So that is what I have already created a detailed playlist starting from uh, drafting a winning PPT, what are all the plans and strategies, how to crack the finale, having a killer presentation, everything I've made it as a playlist in our YouTube channel that is of my startup, Code Hunters as well. One thing which I would like to say for all the SH 2023 participants and the upcoming aspirants, never give up. And uh, consistency is the key. And having a trust in you, having a trust in your team, that is what is everything. And teamwork is always the dream work. And I bet it will be one hell of an experience. That's all I have to say, sir. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of this show. And I would expect and hope that people will make use of the playlist that you have created for their benefit. And that's very nice of you and very uh, thoughtful of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure to be here. So this was Gamaliel. He and his team not only went on to win the competition, but created a startup out of that. So how wonderful is that? So I hope you will be inspired by, you know, such stories, such people and move into this world of Smart India Hackathon with great zeal and enthusiasm. Thanks for watching.